Hello everyone, it's Bible study time. Yay. All right, if you find any of my videos, any of my content, y'all, if you find it relevant, if you feel as though someone you know could benefit from hearing any of my content, any of my videos, please subscribe, please like, and please share. All right, y'all, we are in the book of 1 Samuel. Okay, we got the hair kind of low here. Let me try to pump it up. We're in, we're in the book of 1 Samuel, and we are speaking to uh, Saul and David today, y'all. Yes, we are speaking to Saul and David. We are speaking to chapter 16 of 1 Samuel. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 3. Then I'm going to skip on over to verse 13 and go down to verse 23. So, uh it's going to be an interesting time today. We're going to we're going to call upon the spirit of God to help me and to distinguish and decipher his word. Heavenly Father, I come before you, your humble daughter. Please cover me with your love and your attention. Please speak through me the truth of your word so that I may be able to communicate it in honesty and integrity and in all truthfulness to the children. In love, I call you forward. I love you so deeply, and I thank you. And in God's name, I pray, amen. All right, y'all. Okay, so here we are, chapter 16, all right? And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take a heifer, a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto him, uh, thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. All right, we're going to skip over to 13. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. But the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. And Saul's servant said unto him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God troubleth thee. Let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee, to seek out a man who was who was a cunning player on a harp. And it shall come to pass when the evil spirit from God is upon thee, that he shall play with his hand, and thou shalt be well. And Saul said unto his servants, Provide me now a man that can play well, and bring him to me. Then answered one of the servants and said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite, that is cunning in playing, and a mighty valiant man, and a man of war, and prudent in manners, and a comely person, and the Lord is with him. Wherefore Saul sent messengers unto Jesse, and said, Send me David thy son, which is with the sheep. And Jesse took an ass laden with bread, and a bottle of wine, and a kid, and sent them by David his son unto Saul. And David came to Saul and stood before him, and he loved him greatly, and he became his armor bearer. And Saul sent to Jesse, saying, Let David, I pray thee, stand before me, for he hath found favor in my sight. And it came to pass, when the evil spirit from God was upon Saul, that David took an harp and played with his hand. So Saul was refreshed and was well, and the evil spirit departed from him. Amen. All right, y'all. So this is, I'm not going to really get into the story of uh, David and Goliath, I, maybe another time, but I will speak to this story of Saul and David. So what has happened thus far is uh, Saul was king of Israel. He was Israel's first king. And, you know, Saul had some struggles being a king and doing what God had ordained him to do as king. Um, but so Saul was rejected by God. God rejected Saul and was looking to appoint someone in Saul's place to be king over Israel. 
uh, David knows nothing of any of this, okay? David is just a shepherd boy. He is the, 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 um, the youngest of all of his father's children. Some say he is the, uh, well, I, I, he is the youngest of his father's children. And all he does is he know he knows how to, he's a, he's, he's crafty. He knows how to work, um, slingshots. He knows how to shepherd the sheep. He's good with the harp. He knows how to dance. You know, David is just like, <laughs> David is just a regular dude amongst the people. Okay. David is just a regular guy amongst the people. He knows how to dance. He knows how to, um, you know, do what we would consider now as playing base basketball. He is what they would consider uh, using the slingshot back in back in those times, and and shepherding the sheep. Um, and he knows how to play the harp. He's just a all. He's just a well rounded guy, and he's a people guy. He's one of the people. So. You know, God gives, gives Samuel this command to go and find him another king. And Samuel is like, look, I know I'm anointed and you know I'm going to do everything you ask of me. I've been anointed from the time I was born. Samuel was anointed from his birth. Samuel is a man that has locks in his hair. He's, he's like Samson. He's never had a razor touch his head. He is... He was born and his mother, when she prayed to God for him to be born, promised that she would give him to the priesthood. So Samuel was his, has, has been a priest of Israel all the days of his life. So he's come up amongst the people, kind of like David. Okay, so Samuel now is getting word that you know, uh, Saul is not going to work out. They need to find a replacement for Saul. And Samuel is disheartened by that because he actually loves Saul. Saul is a good person. Saul's problem is not that he's not a good person. Saul's problem had to do with leadership, making executive decisions. He did not make good executive decisions that were, that were in accordance with the will of God. Saul made decisions that pleased everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like God would give him a, 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 a charge and would say, look, I want you to go and I want you to defeat these people and I don't want you to leave anybody behind and I want you to give all the, all the, um, all the spoils from the war over to me. Well, Saul wouldn't manage it. He would allow the people to do things that were against what God commanded. Small things like that. I mean, there's many more, but really at the end of the day, God decided that he needed another king over Israel and that Saul, Saul was not going to be it. Saul knew this. God, through Samuel, told Saul this. So this was not like a shock to Saul. Saul knew this but he just didn't know when it would happen. He did not know of David. So what I read to you when Saul was being um, persecuted, basically troubled by this demonic spirit that God put instead of the angelic spirit that he gave to David, um, he did not know that it would be David that would, uh, that would succeed him. He did not even know of David until his uh, help brought David up only because of the gifts that David has had, uh, one of the many gifts that David had uh, that could assist Saul. So Saul, so Samuel goes and Samuel anoints David. We read that Samuel anoints David, but David is not acting as king. David is just on the bench, okay? And then at the same time, Saul is troubled because prior to David being anointed, Saul was not troubled. So this demonic spirit didn't show itself and didn't start acting up 
upon Saul until David was anointed because one thing in spirit y'all must understand is that, and I know many of us go about asking for things, oh God, please bless me with this, bless me with that. Well, what are you willing to give up for that? You have to, so if you say, God, please remove this from me, take this from me, what do you want to put in its place? Because without you predetermining what you want in its stead, what you fear the most usually will come and be in its place. That's kind of how it works. So whatever you put your attention to the most is what will come. If you say, God, remove this, spirit of depression from me okay great remove it well what do you want to remove it in and what do you want to put in this place and send me a spirit of of love and of kindness and of a friendship you have to be very uh direct with with what you request you can't just be out here blindly requesting things because to take something leaves a void and 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 what are you going to put in its place same way this is a prime example with Saul and David when God ordained David and anointed David with that with the anointing that he gave Saul he he couldn't give both of them that same anointing somebody had to give it up Saul had to be stripped of the anointing for it to be given to David and there needed to be something else put in its place. Now, it did not have to be a demonic spirit. It could have been any other kind of spirit. God chose it to be a demonic spirit for whatever reason. So, you know, and, and Saul didn't know any of this was happening. Neither did David. David didn't know that Saul was being stripped. Per se, I'm sure he knew that it would eventually happen if, if, if Samuel ordained him king. But I'm sure he didn't know that. It, nowhere in the text does it say that David, that Samuel told David that he would be king. Not at this instance. He anointed David. And it says, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. So, you know, because you got to remember, you got people, these are people that talk. There is no, there is no newspaper. And Samuel came to Jesse and all the brothers were there. It was not just David. All of them were privy to Samuel coming and anointing David. So I don't know if Samuel spoke directly and said, David is anointed as king while he was anointing him. He was, he was just anointing David as being anointed of God for something. Because prior to this, remember, Samuel is afraid to go to the house of Jesse and ask of these people. He said, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thou mourn, this, mourn for Saul? And then chapter, verse 2, it says, and Saul said, how can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. So you mean to tell me Saul will kill Samuel? This is the priest that anointed da uh, uh, Saul. Saul will kill Samuel. You don't think that if Samuel let the word out, that he was anointing David as king, that Saul wouldn't have killed David? Saul was going to kill, Samuel was afraid of Saul. And Samuel is the head over all of Israel. The people loved him. So you don't think that, that, that Saul would have easily went and sent people to kill David. So I, I'm sure that David was an anointed king, per se. He was anointed by God for something, but it wasn't, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying anywhere in the text where it said that he was going to be anointed king. I do see where God said that he found 
Um, he found, where did that, where did I see that at? It says here, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Yes. Chapter, verse one, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite. For I have provided me a king, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay, Samuel knew this, but did Samuel communicate that to them? Because it surely could have came, could have got out. Is all I'm saying. And if Samuel was afraid of Saul, then you know David was definitely in jeopardy. Because Saul wouldn't have wanted to give up the throne. So listen to this. And going through this text, I didn't want to get on David and Goliath because, you know, I really want to focus on the relationship with Saul and David. And I don't hear a lot of that. I hear about the, the Goliath and this and that, but really the relationship with Saul and David. Neither one of the, them knew each other. David knew of Saul because he was king of Israel. And eventually, Immediately, let's just say that when David was anointed, Saul learned of David because the evil spirit came upon him and Saul's help told him that David was a very good man of many, many things, one of which was, was playing the harp. So Saul sent for him and David comes now, when Saul sent for him, I'm hypothetically it because the scripture does not say that Samuel came and told David that he was going to be king. Because it says here in the scripture, and he said, peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctifies Je sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. They didn't say anything about being ordained as king. This was a hush-hush thing. So after Samuel leaves, Saul... And at the same time that David is being anointed, mind you, Saul starts to experience demonic spirits upon him. And he doesn't know what to do. He can't appease them. He can't get rid of the, the feeling of it. So he speaks to his help. At the same time, David is experiencing an angelic spirit. So when Saul sends his help to go fetch David to help him and to play him a harp, David, I'm sure, is thinking of it as a blessing. Like, oh, my goodness, this is a blessing from what Samuel has done already. This is part of this. This is a gift. All this goodness is coming to me, not knowing. So surely his father, Jesse, sends him with the with the uh um with bread and wine and a kid and sends him on his way to go see Saul. And he gets to Saul and he's good to Saul and Saul loves him. And then he begins to play the harp for Saul whenever this evil spirit comes upon him. This is interesting to me because even though David is good with the heart, this, this is why I say God is so, God is amazing at how God lines stuff up. It is beyond amazing. David had been playing the harp. David had been slinging his slingshot. David had been out there dancing amongst the people. David had a whole heap of gifts that he just thought were things that he liked to do and he was good at. Never in a million years did he think that all of these gifts, one after the next, after the next, after the next, would lead to 
his testimony. The fact that he knew how to pray and to use dance and song and to use music in his prayer and speaking with God came in handy when he became king. The fact that he knew how to pray, play the harp got him familiar with the man that he would, he would want to befriend. But that would never want to be his friend because he was afraid of him. And that he, this same man that he would end up replacing. And through these gifts, he was made known to this man. David was ordained and, and anointed by Samuel without Saul knowing it was him. Do you think, I don't know, do you think that David's anointing and the fact that he could play the harp in conjunction with one another was the reason why that that demon could be soothed from Saul? so efficiently or was it just because he could play the harp because if that's the case why he could why couldn't Saul find somebody else to play the harp it was his anointing that he didn't even know it was what he had that was taken from him that helped soothe it This scripture was on my mind today. You know, I wanted to go, I wanted to speak to a whole nother, another uh, book in the Bible and uh, just wasn't coming together. And I, I, I just defaulted back to this. Saul, long story short, Saul finds out that David has been anointed by Samuel to be king. And Saul, what once was a love that Saul had for David Saul allowed his fear um, his fear and his ego to turn it to hate. I don't think Saul ever hated David. I think Saul was just unhappy with the decisions of God. Because, you know, many people want to sit and crit criticize Saul and I like to look at it from every angle. Saul was the first king. There was no king before him. He didn't know what to do. He was a young man when he became king. He had no one before him to reference So he's just winging it. He's trying to keep the people happy. We all know how rambunctious these people are. From Moses to Joshua, to all the nations, these people are a rambunctious group. And you mean to tell me you have this young man who was a good man. It says it in the scripture. That's why God chose Saul. Because Saul was a good man. He had a good heart. And nowhere in his uh, uh, shortcomings was it an issue with him and his heart. It was his issue. It was an issue with him following the rules of God. Yeah, he probably, he made some decisions that weren't really mature because he was young. None of this matters at the end of the day. At the end of the day, God put him in a position to rule a nation. And he allowed his need for approval from the people to consistently 
undermine his leadership. That was Saul's main problem. I don't know if he wasn't an integral man. Nowhere in the scripture does it say he doesn't have integrity. It does say, it does show in scripture that he was selfish, that he wasn't a team player. He didn't grow up in that type of way as maybe Samuel did. He grew up in a, in a different type of environment. Samuel grew up in the priesthood. Samuel grew up serving. Saul didn't grow up that way. David and Saul are two different types of people. David is more of a people guy. He's with the sheep. David is more of a Joseph type figure. He's more of an outcast. He knows what it's like to be cast out. He knows what it's like to be under um, undermined. And, and he knows what it's like to be undervalued, discredited, you know, made fun of. He's He knows that. Because when you get further in the scripture to the, the David and Goliath story, David stumbles upon this. He's like, what? What's going on up in here? I just came to bring some food and this and that. And this this uncircumcised Philistine is up in here talking head? What? To, to, the, to Israel? And mocking us? This is David. And what he knew well like the back of his hand, he used to defeat Goliath. Just like what he knew well, like the back of his hand, commingled with his anointing. When Samuel put that anointing on David, it was over. When you put an anointing on somebody that already got a gift, it's it's on it's it's, it's over. When Samuel put the anointing on David, David was a born again. David was a new man. David said, it's a new day. It's a new day. Coupled with the gifts he already had. He was already honing his gifts. He didn't have to be told to go out and, and, and hone on his gifts. He was doing them on his own because he loved them. Only thing, only thing you really hone in on without somebody having to guide you and direct you and remind you is something that you love, friend, and we all know that. So when he came to Samuel, to Saul, he came eager to help. He didn't know anything else. He didn't think he was going to be king. Saul, Samuel had not spoken that to David, nowhere in the scripture. And if, it, if he did, y'all, please comment and show me where in the scripture prior to this, this, this Samuel tells David that he was going to be king. So when all, Sam, all Samuel did was anointed David and David came. When Saul came and, and sent his messengers, David probably said, oh, this is the anointing. This is it. And so did Jesse. Jesse was probably like, oh, this is part of that anointing that Samuel came and did. Not knowing. Not knowing. Throughout this scripture, David has more patience with Saul. even throughout all of Saul's wickedness that he did to David. David, Saul did, Saul did some, he was unnecessarily wicked to David. It wasn't even, it was no reason. If God said to you through Samuel who ordained you that you will not be king, what are you going to do about that? Why would you take that out on that man like that? David had nothing to do with what led up to Saul 
being rejected by God. He had nothing to do with it. All David did was showed up and provided a service. And it wasn't until the David and Goliath situation when David showed up and this Philistine was taunting Israel. Israel was shook. And David shows up. And he says, hold on. Anyway, you know, I, I want to save that for another another Bible study. But just to give you a, a vibe of what David was going through amongst his brothers. This is after Samuel came and anointed him amongst these same brothers. When David came to Goliath, well, when he came to the area um, his brother Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David and said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and, thy not, and the naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. So, you know, it, it, it was, it's kind of like Joseph and his brothers with David. The outcast. And, you know, David defeats Goliath for the love of Israel. David didn't defeat Goliath to show off and to be seen and for people to praise him. David saw a threat to his people. By way of this gigantic Philistine. And he said, well, I know I, I got these, this rock. I'm good with these rocks. And I know I can sling this rock. Because you got to remember, let's keep it, let's be honest here. Goliath wasn't the only giant in the land. The Nephilim were, were amongst the people. They, there were Nephilim after the flood. There was, if, if, if there's a giant called Goliath, what do you think Goliath is? That's a whole nother conversation. So there were other giants. Not to say that David had experience knocking them down, but I'm sure there were wars amongst these giants and the people. Not saying that it was the Israelites or not, but if there's giants in the land, and it wasn't as if these people had never seen someone like Goliath before. They, it never says that in the text. They were just afraid of it, probably because those types of individuals, those giant individuals, have success in overcoming smaller people. So they're afraid of them. But maybe David heard somewhere or saw somewhere where they threw some rocks and... and and, and, and it knew where to hit him at to knock him down. Long story short, David and Saul, let's just say this, Saul hates David. And he makes it a mission to just hunt him down. David runs from him. And... Um, it was for no other reason outside of the fact that the people love Saul. I Me, mean, I'm sorry. The people love David. Even Saul's son Jonathan loved David. And there was there was really no reason why Saul couldn't love David. Had Saul embraced David? Hmm. I don't know what what could have come of that. But nothing but good could have come of that from Saul. Nothing of good could have come from Saul embracing David except for Saul getting blessed. But he was blinded 
by fear. He was blinded by anger and uh, jealousy to a man that had done nothing to him. David didn't do one thing against Saul, but bless him. He consistently blessed Saul. And for David's, all of David's blessings, Saul wreaked havoc or tried to wreak havoc upon him. So uh, that's, that's my Bible study, y'all, on, uh, on Saul and David. How many of us have Saul's and David's in our lives? How many of us? And no matter how you approach it, it's, it's, it's never good enough. You know, it's that, it's that type of thing, right? No matter how you approach it, it's just never good enough. You can sit up all night thinking about it because most, most of the Davids of the world do. You sit up and you think about it and you say, okay, how did this begin? What did I do to them? How did this begin? Okay, maybe I, maybe I said that the wrong way and they took it the wrong way or maybe I did that uh, the wrong way and they took it the wrong way. And then you, you forecast out in your mind, okay, moving forward, I'm going to go about it this way whenever I interact with them so that there's no doubt in their mind on me or in his mind or in her mind on me. And uh, they feel more at ease with me. Sometimes, friend, there's nothing you can do to appease the souls of the world. It's the spirit that they're wrestling with. You think you're wrestling with the person, but really you're wrestling with a spirit. A spirit that is controlling an individual. They don't even have control over it. So how can you navigate it? The thing with David, and I think the thing that made David um, so special is that David wasn't perfect. David made many mistakes. David, David, and Beers, uh, David made many mistakes. But David did what God asked him to do. David stayed in alignment. Were there times when David was very angry with Saul? Absolutely, I'm sure. Or else he's just not human. When someone do you like Saul did David, you, you're going to be a little resentful. But David's heart was good. And the reason why David's heart was good was because he understood or had empathy to why Saul moved the way he did. He felt bad for him. So how could you be angry and have animosity to somebody that you can empathize with? Empathy is the, is the thing that takes the frustration and the anger away. When you can look at somebody's situation and be in their shoes and say, hmm, I can understand. I might not do it that way. I might not go about it that way, friend. But I can understand. Long story short, David goes on to be king of Israel. He becomes a mighty, mighty king. One of the mightiest kings of Israel ever. And his line, he is of the line of Boaz. I just spoke to Ruth. This is a direct descendant to the child of uh, Obed, which is Boaz and Ruth's son. David is of this vine. This vine goes on to birth King Solomon. And then on to, of course, birth the Messiah, Jesus. My book, on, my, my, my Bible study on 1 Samuel to, to you all today, I hope it was a, as a, I hope it's thought provoking and uh, something that you can utilize in your day-to-day -day life.
We're loved more than we'll ever know. I'll never stop telling you we are loved. We are loved. We are loved. And it's one love. It's not a, a cultural or a demographical or a, 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 a racial. It is a love of the heart. It is the love of the truest sense. And that is of the truest portion of your heart. Not the, not the stuff that you show the world. But the righteousness of your heart is where this love I'm speaking to comes from. I love you and I thank you. Peace and love.